Welcome to Smart Remarks. Here comes the fiscal cliff. Let's do a cannonball. How about? So I've been watching the whole business on the fiscal cliff, and I've been getting a laugh out of it because it seems to me that President Obama has Republicans by the neck. And poll after poll is showing that if we go over the fiscal cliff, if the Bush tax cuts expire and everybody winds up paying more in taxes, Americans are going to blame the Republicans. And they should blame the Republicans because, frankly, the party is willing to hold the middle class hostage so that they can get a continuation of tax cuts on the wealthy. Uh, I mean, the job creators, it's an outrage that we should even consider raising taxes. Uh, John Boehner actually floated a counter proposal wherein he agreed that maybe we could raise revenue a little bit, but that got some instant pushback from conservatives out like Grover Norquist who said, no, 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 we can't consider raising taxes at all. We can only have cuts all the better to drown government in the bathtub. Meanwhile, poll after poll after poll is showing that a majority of America likes the idea of taxing the rich a little bit more just fine. And I think I have a good idea why that is. It's not because, as Republicans will tell you, uh, that Obama is engaging in class warfare. And it's not because the 47% are a bunch of moochers. But rather, a whole lot of people have lived through the last decade. They know that the Bush tax cuts were sold as a means of generating broad-based prosperity for everyone. And they know that what happened as well. They know that the Bush tax cuts did generate some prosperity for some, but as for themselves, well, maybe not so much. Henry Blodgett has a fascinating bit uh, on Business Insider this week of a couple charts showing how that corporate profit margins just hit an all-time high, but worker wages as a percent of the economy just hit an all-time low. Do you think there could be a connection between the two? There absolutely is a connection between the two. And so what we see here is that this idea that if we lower taxes on, on the job creators, on the wealthy, not only is it going to create jobs, it's going to create jobs that pay decent wages with good benefits. It's turned out to be a lie. It hasn't been true. The policy has been a failure from that perspective. Americans in the middle class and the lower classes have lived this reality. And so now they see this insistence that we need to continue low taxes on the wealthy because maybe now they'll finally acquiesce to making, creating some jobs and paying you a little bit better. They see that as lunacy. They realize the policy has already failed and they have absolutely no interest in continuing that policy because cutting taxes on the top earners does not in and of itself lead to more jobs or better jobs so long as the corporate sensibility is all about profit maximization. You can slash taxes on the job creators. It doesn't mean that a single job will actually be created, though it might mean those job, taker, those job creators take more in profits for themselves. Americans as a whole get this. They understand this. They know what's happened to them over the course of the past decade. And so now they see the Republican proposals on the fiscal cliff and think, they want to fix this by making me wait longer for Medicare. They want to cut my Social Security benefits. On what planet are these people living on? How about uh, we tax those who have benefited the most from the Bush tax cuts a little bit more? Yeah, that sounds like a better idea. It's not because they're moochers. And it's not an outrage. It's because they know what's happened to them. They know what's happened to the economy. They know failure when they see it.